Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add a wrap to a 24 ounce plump from the Tipsy Magnolia. I usually do voiceovers on my tutorials, so please excuse me if I get tongue tied. I'm terrible about doing lives or, you know, just real time videos, <laughs> but I'm gonna try to accomplish that today. So I can show you a real time of me adding vinyl to a tumbler. I've had a, lots of people ask me uh, on almost every video I do a full wrap on, how do you get your wraps on your tumbler so perfectly, so straight? I always get bubbles in mine. So I'm gonna try to walk you through all of those steps as I'm working on it myself, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is show you all of these gorgeous new wraps that are releasing the same day of this video. So I will have that time and website, all the information that you need to grab some of these gorgeous three dimensional vinyl wraps from Slide Hustle. These are absolutely beautiful and I cannot wait to see what they look like under epoxy. I mean, just look at that detail. Stunning. We are most of the time lost on what to do for men's cups or you know, Father's Day, men's gifts coming up. We have Christmas ugh, right around the corner. <laughs> Hard to think about that, but a lot of people do start making Christmas holiday gifts and everything around June or July. Really pretty cactus print, butterflies, look at the detail. I love this one. This would make a beautiful wedding cup. Got those. Some sunflowers, this hummingbird. A peacock. These are super popular. Anytime I do a peacock cup, I have lots of attention on that post because they're so beautiful and those colors are just really vibrant. Lighthouse. This would be really pretty on a round tray. Put a little glitter at the top and the bottom. Yes. Oh, I've got two of those. One might be clear. That's white too. Now I just got a double. Beach sunset with some flowers. Makes me think of like Hawaii. Two of those two. All right, so let's pick a favorite. I really don't even know which one I want to do. They're all so beautiful. I think I might go with the owl. I love the owl. So pretty. I know that's a tough one. Okay, let's just go with the owl. Let's make a decision, which I'm really, really bad at. All right, first thing, we need to trim the edges. Go ahead and measure that up. These wraps will be big enough to fit on a 24 ounce from Tipsy Magnolia. However, they are pretty universal because they have added a little bit extra at the top and the bottom and a little bit extra right here. So when you apply these, no, they are not gonna be perfectly seamless depending on the dimensions of your tumbler, okay? So if you have a, uh-oh, I'm out of 32 ounce pumps. Here's one that I'm gonna strip because it's super duper thick. So, 
Say you have a 32 ounce plump and you do want to use one of these wraps. What you would do is place this on here. You can mark it off at the bottom and then glitter this half, or glitter the top half, put you a nice little pinstripe or a couple of pinstripes to break that up and blend everything in together. Or you can also just do a really nice ombre with glitter to about right here on here and right there on the top just to blend that in as well. And that will look really nice. So you can use these on a larger than a 20 to 24 ounce. You just have to get a little creative with the top and the bottom. And to me, that just adds a little something extra to the cup. So I don't mind that at all. So we're gonna trim this to size. And first, I'm just gonna cut off the excess white, and then we will go back and fine tune it to you, the dimensions of the cup. I'm doing this just so, I don't know. It's just a process in my head, <laughs> that's why. My dog started barking, so I had to start over. Okay, so after I trimmed off that white, I'm gonna wrap it around the cup and just kind of measure it. You want a little bit of that stainless showing so your epoxy can grip onto that top rim. And you want to see where you want to trim it off. I go just ever so slightly above that bottom right there. You see my mark? It's just right above the bottom edge. And then we are going to trim off the extra on one side. The other side is going to overlap and we will trim that off later. Come on. There we go. All right. We're going to lift up a little bit of this. Trim off about an inch. More like half an inch. And then this is the part that we trimmed off the edge that's gonna go on the tumbler. This tumbler is not prepped because if it were sanded, my vinyl would not attached to it as well as if it were left as is. So I don't do anything to this tumbler before I add on my vinyl. Once I have that all the way even, or even all the way around, I'm pulling it really snug. I'm going to press this piece of exposed vinyl down Flip it, give it a little start right there. So you have like your backing going off of your vinyl, if that makes sense. And then this big squeegee is a total lifesaver. I'm just gonna put it right here in that crease. And you want to apply even pressure. You don't want to push too much on this side, push too much on that side. That can cause your vinyl to stretch the opposite way that you want it to go. And it can cause it not to be even once you make it to the other side. Once you have made it, make sure everything lines up really nice. And then we're gonna take a piece of painter's tape. You can't see that line, but if you're feeling brave, you can go for it and try to trim that nice and straight. But 
most of the time it doesn't work out for me like that. So we're going to go down right in between the overlap. Okay. So make sure that that is flat and I'll just push that down and I shouldn't have. Okay, that's good enough. So right in between where your vinyl ends and where your vinyl started, make a straight line. Grab your craft knife and cut right alongside your tape. Make sure you use a good bit of pressure because you don't want to go back and have to cut again. It can cause it to come over just a hair and that can cause a little bit of a gap. Remove your painter's tape. Remove the vinyl over top. And then we're gonna use our craft knife and remove the vinyl underneath as well. Because we don't want that little lump Careful not to damage your vinyl. I try not to have to lift this up and then pull this off. I try to just pull that underneath piece off at an angle so it doesn't distort anything in this area. And you just press it down. Everything is straight around the top. We have no bubbles in our vinyl because we use this nice big squeegee and applied pressure to that. And then around the bottom, we trimmed it to where it would be even and not overlapping this curve. So that is straight as well. This is gonna be beautiful. Okay. Next thing we want to do is put some paint on the bottom. We're just gonna match a paint color to this. I'll probably use burgundy. I'm gonna put that, you can see if it'll focus. There we go. There's a hairline of the vinyl showing. That's exactly what I want. And I am reusing that same piece of tape that I used to cut down the seam. So if you are using an acrylic paint, um, I have my Flippin' Awesome Paints from Crystal Act, also my uh, Colorflex paints from Colorflex or Artistry. Um, you can do that as this is, but if I decide to spray paint this, you can actually take the backing from your vinyl and reuse that. Just so we're not wasting any paper, right? I'm gonna place a piece right over that gap. You don't have to be pretty. And then I'm gonna go around the top too. Right, 
I'm gonna go spray paint this. I used Wine Stain from Color Shop. Color Shop is my favorite spray paint. I have never got any drips or runs or bubbles. Stopped up spray paint cans. Never get any of that from using their paint. And this is one coat. That looks pretty good. I did remove that while it was still a little wet. The Color Shot spray paints dry really fast. You can see it's already, I went outside, come straight back in to start recording and it's already starting to dry. So we'll be able to put some epoxy on this really soon. All right, so we're all dried up. Now, at this point, since this is just vinyl, you can add a name to the back, add a decal, for this, since the pattern is so busy, I would do a solid color offset with your primary color vinyl. Or you can even add on a name long ways with a scrolly font to cover up that seam. You can get creative and put some stripes over that, whatever you want to do. But we are gonna be adding glitter into our epoxy. So that's really gonna help blend that just a little bit and just give this an overall shimmer, make it a really simple but beautiful cup. So before we start mixing our epoxy, we're gonna add on our respirator. I don't talk about this near enough in any of my tutorials since I'm talking to y'all through this one rather than doing a voiceover. Make sure you always put on your respirator. Regardless of what any epoxy company says out there, when you mix part A and part B, it creates a chemical reaction, which is going to emit harmful fumes. And you want to make sure you have your respirator on, okay? Be in a ventilated area, have your door closed if it is um, a room that's inside of your home and make sure your kids, your family, your pets are not in the room with you. Wear your respirator. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on. It might be hard to hear me. <laughs> Hopefully not. You also want to make sure that it properly fits. And most of the time, you can find guides on how to do that from the websites of where you purchased your respirator. All right, I'm gonna get our little measuring cup. Grab And we're gonna be using a little extra incorporated Turbo Dry Epoxy. This is their fast set. They have a regular epoxy as well, and I absolutely love both of them. Okay. This is a thinner viscosity epoxy, so there's no reason to heat it up. I guess unless it gets really cold in your workspace. I'm only gonna mix 15 milliliters since again, this is a thinner viscosity epoxy. It actually lasts a little longer. You can do thinner coats. So I do like that as well. You'll have to, <laughs> excuse me if it sounds like I'm wheezing. I hate wearing my respirator, but we got to stay safe.
After years of wearing it, I still cannot get used to breathing in it. Kind of gives me like anxiety, I guess. All right, we got 15 milliliters. Seven and a half of A and seven and a half of B. When I'm mixing my epoxy, I stir obviously fast. I don't worry about bubbles. I have a torch and my torch is going to eliminate those bubbles for me. So I just mix anything that I have or that I'm working with super fast because I'm impatient, number one. And how I tell that my epoxy is mixed properly is once I have mixed for a couple of minutes, I'm going to take some of this epoxy, spin it around my popsicle stick, and put it on the side. And then when I hold it up to the light, there's no streaking. See, that little run right there is clear, and it doesn't have any streaking in it. So that is how I determine that my epoxy is mixed properly. You want to make sure that you're getting all over the bottom and then constantly rub it over the sides or the edges of your cup and do this. All right. So one good thing about the a little extra, uh, well, either of their epoxies, their regular epoxy actually has a four to six hour dry time it's one of the fastest regular setting epoxies that I have used, and it also gives you a very long work time. And their fast set epoxy dries in two to three hours, and it's the exact same. I've actually used about 170 milliliters without it setting up on me, epoxying 15 cups at one time, which is pretty impressive for a fast set. I have lost my glitter. I'm going to grab my glitter that we're going to add into here. All right. We're going to add in a little Firefly from Firefly from PDB Creative Studio. This is an extra fine opal glitter. You can also use epoxy additives or a very, 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 very tiny amount of mica powder. If you're using mica, make sure it's like a silver shimmer, a gold shimmer, or I've used some opal micas as well, or white will give an overall sparkle on your tumblers, whatever project you're working on. These are craft crate chucks. You can actually get those off of this, the Tipsy Magnolia website as well. I love these for my cups. They hold them on there really good and sturdy.
See how much sparkle that little tiny bit added? There we go. I'm going to pop this on my turner and torch it just to get any of those micro bubbles out. And I know that this was sort of like a, a really simple design that you don't have to do multiple layers of epoxy on, but at minimum, I like to do a four coats of epoxy. So after about an hour and a half, I'll put another coat of epoxy and then I'll do another one after that. I will take this off, sand it really well and just make sure that there's no dips or divots in it anywhere and then I will add on a final coat of regular epoxy from a little extra and it will be done. And here she is. I love how this tumbler turned out. I hope that you do as well and have learned lots from this tutorial. If you would like me to do more tutorials like this, I know that they're a little lengthier since they are slowed down and you're watching as I'm working, but you can work along with me and I know that can be really helpful. So just let me know down in the comments if you want me to make more real-time tutorials like this and maybe also let me know something that you are struggling with so I can help tailor the tutorials to what you need the most. I did get word that all of these vinyls are dropping Thursday, June 15th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you are part of the Slide Hustle Facebook group. I'll have it linked down below. Every Thursday they do special discounts on Ladies Night. And of course, all other items will be listed down below for you with some coupon codes. That's all for today. Thank you all so much and we'll see you next time.